How's it going, everyone? Hey. This is uh, David and Nimit. We are here in the uh, new and improved digs, as you can see from behind me. The, the, this is the bunker that I'm in. That's why it looks like a storage <laughs> closet. And Nimit is in the, the, the bunker that is, uh, that is Long Island. It's a, it's one big bunker. Um, yeah. So, so great to be back. I uh, hope everybody is, um, ready to get some good productivity, uh, tips while you're working from home. And so, um, we'll let, we'll let, uh, David, you want to, you want to, uh, you want me to kick off the first one? Yeah. Why don't you go ahead? I will. Okay. So, so my first productivity tip, um, Dave, I don't know if you want to put it on the, on the, on the screen here, but, um, the first tip is to have a, uh, have a measurable target, uh, to write it down. Um, the, the, the goal here is to have something that is measurable. Um, I think I, I find that a lot of times we, we create goals that are very generalized, like, Hey, I want to work out more, or I'm going to learn how to code this year. Um, and we don't, we don't set any, uh, you know, something that's measurable, um, against that. And so it's impossible for us or anybody else to know how we're doing. So, so make sure that you create a measurable target. Um, this, you know, this productivity hack is really more about even in your day. Like, you know, if you, if you feel like you're going to do, uh, this much, you're going to make progress on this project. Um, you're going to get this far, especially for tasks that are, kind of long-term tasks, uh, write them down. Um, if you can gamify it somehow where you um, you can create some kind of point system or have your spouse or friends kind of participate in it, a uh, classic one here is around, um, you know, like a health goal. Uh, but but uh, even, even around productivity, I think it can make you a lot more productive if you're, you know, let's say you're writing a paper and you want to, you want to make sure that you get get a certain number of pages done by a certain time. So, um, and and then, the, and then the last thing is that after you have done that, um, also write a recap or a retrospective about how it went. Um, so I know that you know at Fullstack we always used to do weekly retrospectives where students kind of get to um, you know discuss with each other how this week went what they liked about the week, what they want to do better next week. So I think the retrospective is really important in kind of icing your commitment uh, to the goal. So, so yeah, that's the first tip, uh, have measurable targets uh, and then actually measure yourself against those uh, targets. Yeah, when you say like the, I think the retrospective oftentimes it is um, the, it's really important to think about the things you're thinking the things about the things you're doing, right? To think about how you're thinking about things and doing retrospective is a good way for someone to measure that, right? If you don't do it, then yeah. it's oftentimes, um, you're not getting any chance, chance to reflect on what's working and what's not working. All right, the next one, this is one of my favorite ones that dovetails nicely with what, what Nima just said, is to focus on systems versus just goals, right? And so oftentimes we have a goal in mind but two, one, two things that are tough about goals. One is oftentimes you get there and then you realize that that's not exactly what you were looking for. You know, I, hear, I see that a lot with people, especially on things like weight, getting their first significant other, money goals, right? You get there and you're like, oh, I've saved a thousand dollars rainy day fund. Now what, right? Or I've hit my weight goal target. Uh, and so systems are a way to encapsulate what are the behaviors going to do that will get me there. And then that, or continue to be healthy for me once I get there, right? And so, obviously, for um, for health, it's things like eating, eating properly, exercising. But for for me, whenever I'm trying to learn something new, I often say, you know, it's more important for me to sit down every day and do something here for 30 minutes, right? So I'm trying to learn how to play guitar. I'm trying to learn a new programming language. I'm like, you know, I don't feel great about tonight's not going to be an optimal night for me to to learn um, something fancy about. TypeScript or for me to write some code, but I'm going to sit down here and do it anyway for 30 minutes because it's important to have that commitment much more than, you know, this is going to be the master plan towards getting this, you know, this thing done. So have a system uh, that gets you towards that goal that can survive past that goal. 
I actually got that from a uh, the cartoonist of Dilbert, and he mm. said that it's his. Um, and you know, many famous. It's true. It's it's in the literature many places around how artists work, and it's a uh, you know the saying I would say best encapsulated as amateurs have, you know, amateurs have goals. Professionals wake up every day and work on their system. And so, um, if you want to be a professional, you got to just kind of commit to doing it. Yeah, I, I think you know a, a great example when I think about coding efficiency are kind of um, burn down charts or um, e even some project management methodologies like Scrum uh, that really help you and your team stay on focus. There's also great SaaS software out there that can actually measure the velocity of your team and help you know that you are on target, give everyone a target to go towards. And so, um, you know, in, in, in your, I guess in, in anybody's specific kind of work, they, they may have a lot of tools that they can use to build those systems as well. Right. Um, so, so the, the, uh, the next one we'll talk about is, um, is the idea of, uh, helping you be committed, right? So we call this commitment devices. Um, Commitment devices are um, they are they are systems uh, in, in a sense, and uh, or, or they are uh, some contracts, their agreements, they are um, courses you've joined, they are um, you know bets you've made, or you know all all these things are, are kind of commitment devices that you can use to make your mind uh, be more committed to a goal that you know you want to achieve. Um, and so a really simple one that actually works well for me that's directly related to productivity is just a browser website blocker uh, during the times that I know I'm supposed to be, you know, if I have a task that's supposed to take uh, a certain amount of time and I know I want to be focused on it, um, I could get easily distracted by going to, let's say, Reddit or Hacker News or something. And so I, I just set up a, um, a blocker for myself for let's say like you know one hour or two hours that the browser won't let me go to these sites and it's it, it's it's really a simple thing but it lets you uh it lets you stay committed um uh, another great tool that uh, is made by a friend of ours um is called bminder um we, we can put a link to that in the um in our description uh, afterward but it's a it's a it, it, it's a it's a tool that lets you bet on your own uh, you know, on your own ability to, to stay on a certain uh, goal and, and target. Um, and um, it, I mean, that's the, that's the company's entire business model, right, Dave? Like that, that like, well, let me, let the, uh, it's, it's funny because basically it lets you commit to a system. And if you break that, gets you towards a goal. If you break that system, you pay them money. And the more you break right. it, the more money you pay them. And they, they're the two that's run by the two of the nice people I know. And it's funny because they they would, in most situations, they would hate to take your money, but they think by doing it this way, it's actually a way for people to truly commit and, um, you know, and work through things because the thought of losing money, this is a psychological hack of making it painful for, painful to not do the thing you have because it's very painful for humans to, um, to, to lose money on, on doing stuff. So. Yeah. Um, and it's cool. And it, it's like, uh, it's something that's um, totally uh, bootstrapped, right? Uh, and, and it's a it's a pretty uh, it, you know there's just a lot of fans uh, of the site, yeah. and so so yeah, uh, interesting to check out. Um, so yeah, I you know th th there are a, a few other tactics that you can use. Uh, one one that uh, I I also like is sharing your goals and expectations with your friends or family. Um, so that that kind of social commitment device is important. Like if you if you tell everyone I'm training to run a marathon, um, that you know in in three months, and you kind of register for that marathon, then you've committed yourself publicly to that, and uh, and you know and we, we, you can kind of hack your your brain that wants to avoid embarrassment in your community, and to really force you to train and to do it. So things like that I think are are great. Um, you know, it's funny, my sister is actually training for the marathon right now. And once she committed to it on her Instagram, it became like a, a thing for her. And now she's, um, she went from never having run more than a mile. Uh, I think she just completed her first half marathon practice run. So wow. yeah, it's incredible. The, the fear of public shaming. Yeah. Um, peer pressure, who would have thought it could help you? <laughs> All right. Uh, 
the next thing I want to talk about is uh, having, I got this tip from Mark and Andreessen. And whenever I feel overwhelmed, this is where I go back to, because it's a very simple thing. And it's also sometimes makes me feel very effective. So his idea is at the, at the end of every night, before you go to bed, sit down and take an index, index card like this mm-hmm. and just write down what are the three big things I have to get done tomorrow that are going to move forward my goals. So you look at your goals and say, you know, my goal is to rebuild the, our curriculum. My goal is to um, learn how closures work in JavaScript, right? And then you write that down as your big thing. And then tomorrow when you get up, you only you only focus on those three things exclusively. I think um, this goes back to this this mental image I have or um, that I always keep in mind is your life is a jar, right? And your jar that can hold the time of your life, right? All the things you can fill with it. And we have um, email, responding to each individual email is like a, a drop of sand, right? And then getting the big things that are gonna move your life forward are like the big rocks, right? And you know, I think the obvious thing is that if you put the sand in first, the rocks will never go in. But if you put right. the rocks in first, the sand will flow around the rocks, right? And so the rocks should be things like my career, my family, my health, and you know, much easier to have been done. I, there's many times where I am up till 11 processing email when I could have read my kid a bedtime story, right? But um, I was th- whenever I whenever I get too focused, whenever I feel like myself doing too much minutia, I get back to, okay, imagine your life as the jar. Focus on the rocks. Write your three big rocks down on an index card for tomorrow. Because as soon as you get to your computer, you look at it and you say, it's a great reminder that um, here's my focus of the day. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I really love that that uh, that image. Uh, it, it makes so much sen- uh, sense that uh, your day can just fill up like the sand, you know, fills up a jar and and you have you end the day and you, you don't even remember what you've done or what you got accomplished, right? Like if you, if you put no rocks in there. Um, and I, you know, what's funny, like it, it also, I think years also work like that kind of, right? Like if you, um, if, if, if you've not set any interesting, um, challenges for yourself that you've accomplished over a year, um, sometimes you don't even remember what you did that year. Like what happened? It's just like full of small, small things like going to work every day. And so it's like even taking care of those like bigger goals that you, you may have, um, in your life it's like recursive all the way down right like a year your rocks of the year your rocks of your decade your rocks of basically that forms the rocks of your life right yeah so, um it's pretty it's cool. recursive all the way up yeah love that um so so the the next one uh i want to talk about is um around like like a a more uh I guess this one is more obvious as a way to get productive is just have less to do. Um, and so be more productive. And, and the way that, you know, we want to uh, word that is that figure out how you can delegate or automate more about your day to day. Right. And so delegate means if you have a team, if you have, you know, let's say a spouse, how, how can you split up your, uh, your chores so that things can be more efficient. You can time things so that they work better. Um, if you have a team, how can you let people specialize on certain tasks so that everybody can get more efficient on the work that they do? You, you know, like the concept of assembly line versus uh, everybody building, you know, the, the entire entire part of it. And so um, so I think, de- you know, being being a good delegator is uh, is essential to also being a manager. Um, I think that you have to know when you let go, uh, when to let go so that you can be better. Um, one thing that's that's not directly related to productivity, but I think is something that um, is a it, it's related to this is um, I, I've learned that when when you are a smaller company, let's say you're under 20, 30 employees, then the the strengths of the founders are really the strengths of the company, right? Because the founders are kind of doing those things. And then as you get bigger from 30, 40 employees to maybe 100, 200 employees, um, if the founders don't learn to delegate, to automate the things that they were really good at and comfortable with, then those become the biggest weaknesses um, of the company. And it, you know, it, it tends to be things that founders just kind of refuse to let go and give to other people who are maybe even better than them at it. And so, so yeah, so I think, you know, delegating, automating, um, you know, sometimes we wonder how do these 
CEOs who run companies with hundred thousand employees. Like, how do they have all the you know? How do they have time in the day to do everything that needs to be done? Uh, well, it's because they've mastered uh, you know this kind of this point, which is how how do you delegate to become more productive? And um, I haven't I think about this one a lot as an executive, and um, you know I recently had a chance to talk to Kevin Ryan who just bought Meetup actually, so congrats to him. Um, and he was a founder of Guild where, where I worked for him. And he said like the the best executives, the only true remain the skill that will last you all the way to being um, an executive is finding and nurturing great people, right? Mm. Because um, most people who do well in their career will oftentimes be very good at one thing, right? You'll be good at technology, you'll be good at sales, you'll be good at or organization, you'll be good at um, you know, like operations, or you'd be good at, you know, some particular technical skill. And then th like Nimit says, that kind of becomes your, it becomes your weakness as you scale organization, because you tend to stay in there too long. And then finding great people, um, finding great people and having great ability to make, make and orchestrate people making strong decisions is the two skills that I think executives truly, um, need to continue to focus on the whole time. So that's not, you know, I would say that's something that everybody should um, should worry about too much right now, but it is something that I, I find interesting is that uh, people are the only true leverage that um, that executives get. Uh, the other thing I, I love to share is that Nim and I oftentimes also love to um, automate as much stuff in technology as possible. So we will, um, you know, we're pretty good at writing little scripts that will automate things that people wouldn't imagine it is easy to automate. So everything from, um, I think Nimit once wrote a script that would log into uh, a site to set up uh, the a new employee onboarding. And it takes, you know, it takes probably 20 minutes each, but you do that all the time and it gets, you know, pretty tedious. And then he had written a script to, um, to really make that um, smooth. But then I want to share this XKCD because this is my favorite XKCD of, of all time. <laughs> I know what you're going to share. <laughs> so this is a, um, so once you get, if you're a programmer and you love to automate stuff, this is what, um, one thing I often tell people is that I will spend more time automating a task than the whole thing would have taken to do itself. Right. So then we'll, so someone comes to me and say, Hey, I need to input. I need to, you know, enter this form 25 times and nothing. Okay. 25 times each form takes about 10 minutes. So that's about four hours of work, right? But you know, if I automated this, I could theoretically automate it in two hours and then save myself two hours. But of course, you know, you have to make the plan of like, which automation tool do I use? Which language do I use? Oh, I'm gonna use JavaScript. Should I use Puppeteer or should I use, you know? And before you know it, you spent 10 hours working on it. And um, and then oftentimes automation might not even work entirely. So, um, so the theory yeah. is that, you know, the automation saves you all this time. What happens is that you know you write the code, you debug it, it doesn't actually work. You have to keep maintaining the, the task, and you can't even do the original task anymore. So uh, that's happened to me once or twice. But um, but yeah. yeah, this one and then uh, this is a second XKCD that's amazing. Is is something worth the time to automate? So um, <laughs> how much time do you save versus how can you do the task? So I think Nimbus has actually came in pretty good because we did it about every month, and every month it would take about six hours. So I think you probably spent about what, a week automating it. Yeah, it was good. But I do remember yeah. when we, we we finally had like a larger HR team and I was trying to teach them how to run that in the terminal and they just lost it. And and I think that's when I realized that like, you know, you can make these tools and automation scripts, but sometimes like uh, sometimes what takes a lot more time is the front end that developers have to make on top of that to make it easy to use. Right. And so like, yeah. like if you're just making it for one person, sometimes um you know it, it hits the the it hits its limit uh when you try to like let other people have it but but anyway i mean i think you know this is it, you don't you don't necessarily have to be a programmer there's actually a lot of cool tools out there that help you automate um you know automate ac actions on on websites um and 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 other things as well and then and then the old-fashioned automation is really just getting a virtual assistant getting uh, an assistant uh, of any sort so i think all of that stuff can be uh, helpful if it's applied well, um, you know, save you time. So, all right. And uh, our our final uh, tip that we like to share is just 
really taking mental health breaks. I think that this is something that as I've um, gotten farther in my career, I've realized when I'm not taking the time to do this, how um, how painful my work has gotten. And that, you, you know, you can you can sprint in the short term, but you pay for the long term, often with things like health problems, burnout, uh, burnout in particular, right? Because you oftentimes get to a point where you're driving yourself so hard that um, and then all of a sudden you, you just, you even lack the will to drive yourself. So yeah. it's funny, this analogy doesn't even make sense anymore because I, don't, I think most people in this generation don't even know it. But in the old days, as you were, you know, using your computer, you would be writing stuff all over the hard drive. Right. And eventually what people have to do is you have to do something called defragmenting, defragmenting your hard drive. And it would take about like all night. But basically it was just like, look, when you're writing such your hard drive, I was the computer was just spewing it everywhere. And you had to really uh, it had to go back and put things in the right order so that it would um, save space and also make it faster to access. And so I think, you know, you have to as you're learning something, you really are kind of throwing stuff everywhere. And you need to um, go through this defragmentation process so that um, your brain can kind of like connect it properly and um, and uh, connect it properly and also uh, you know put it in the right place in your mind. I think another thing here is um, to do this constantly. One thing we really like is uh, walking meetings and just spending more time walking around. It uh, it really is. Um, I think similar to similar to the analogy of um, why talking helps you debug, walking, I think, helps you activate more parts of your body in, in, in thinking about um, a problem. I think one thing I think about a lot, I don't know if it actually means anything, is um, that your body has neurons throughout kind of really the whole spinal column down to your stomach, um, maybe even farther too, but um, there's a lot more of your body that's involved in thinking than just the brain. And so I think that the more we can activate it, the more kind of of our intellect that we can access. Yeah. All right. So there it is. Six walking or, yeah. tips. Oh, hey, look, and we have we have the uh, we have the founder of Beeminder in our chat. Uh, hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. Um, let's see. Let me see. I'm gonna shoot him an invite if he wants to. If he wants to um, join and maybe He's a master of productivity tips, right? Yeah, um, and then, but in the meantime, we also can do a bonus round of some like of some tactics. I yeah. think people oftentimes, you know, love the tactics more than the um, more than the. So I just sent it down. Let me see if he. I, I just want to warn you guys. Like the number one tactic that's coming here, David is so passionate about this one. It's gonna sound ridiculous to you, but okay. just just hear him out. Hear him out. Okay, so let me. Okay, so my number one most favorite thing that has ever happened to me in the uh, probably the history of using computer is this Chrome extension called Video Speed Controller. All right, so Video Speed Controller it lets you have keyboard shortcuts to to raise and lower the speed of video, and because I watch a, I, I, it, it turns out that um, watching video at one X. So you wind up, everyone's here watching this as, as talk at 1x. But I think afterwards, if you want to watch this again, over and over again, um, you can oftentimes just increase it to like, I, I oftentimes find myself watching video at anywhere from 2 to 4x speed. And I'll tell you two reasons why I do it. One, just of course, the time it saves, right? You save a ton of time. Uh, and two, I feel like it actually helps you focus better, right? Because if I'm, if I'm watching something slow mm. and my, it has space for me to wander, then I can... Um, I lose focus and do something else. But if I'm watching someone give a lecture on, you know, microeconomics at 4x, like you better be focusing on that as fast as possible. <laughs> so I watch everything. And then the thing that I've started doing now that some people consider sacrilegious is I, I even watch my entertainment at um, at very high speeds because I think I, um, everyone, well, I started doing this when everyone was pestering me to watch Silicon Valley because everyone was like, oh, have you ever heard of Silicon Valley? And I was like, yes, I've heard of it. And then they were like, have you seen the scene? I, I hadn't seen the scene. So um, I went through one night and watched all five seasons at 4X speed. I think I, I got the general gist. And um, <laughs> the general gist, you're like, you know, people yeah, get funded, guys. companies get acquired. <laughs> uh, 
But now I can watch, we can watch entertainment at high speed. I feel like now if someone gives me a recognition for a show, I can just power through it so quickly. I don't need to worry about committing yeah. to it. All right. So like Dan is a, uh, okay. Okay. Dan is in our right. stream. Okay. Dan, I'm going to add you to our stream. And then if you want to share some, uh, some of your productivity tactics or give another uh, intro to Beamminder, we'd love to have that. Awesome. Uh, hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. How's it going? Hey, good to see you. Um, oh, my goodness. I have so many ridiculous productivity things. I could overwhelm everyone with, with this kind of stuff. What's your, uh, what's your yeah, we're, we're sharing our top top three, um, each one. So if you, had to, if you had to power rank them. Um, gosh, so I'm all about the commitment devices and all sorts of elaborate ways to use Beeminder in particular, of course. Thank you so much for the, the little testimonial there. That was, that was awesome. Um, let's see. Um, oh, that, so one thing I use in conjunction with Beeminder a lot is this other thing we made called Tag Time, which is really super nerds only. I guess this audience is, is pretty nerd heavy, right? Uh, but it's like a Perl script and you have to edit like pops up Vim as the way to edit stuff. It's ridiculous. Um, but it's the idea is to uh, <laughs> uh, randomly sample yourself. So uh, like tracking your time, I think is really important. I'm just too much of a space cadet to like remember to start and stop the timer. Um, and then there are things like rescue time, which I think are, that's another great productivity tip I definitely recommend. Uh, that's totally passive. Like it keeps track of what websites or programs you have running. And so we made this one called tag time that's it tries to be in between. It's like at random times a window pops up and says, what are you doing at this moment? And you answer with tags. Um, so, and yeah, so we can feed that into Beeminder, of course. Um, I don't know, what else? We have integrate with all the like Fitbit and OneKeeper and all the uh, fitness type gadgets. Oh, and other productivity things like Trello and GitHub issues. Um, so. What are the, um, Dan, I, I have a question for you, yeah. um, which is what do you see are the biggest, um, or not the biggest, but like the place where people fail the 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 most often uh, when they're going for like a long term uh, goal or achievement. Like, what are some things to avoid, maybe? Uh, so I um, I didn't see all of your broadcast. I was kind of catching up, playing it at double speed. Like <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. So I was on target to catch up, but then you invited me in, so I missed some of it. But uh, but what you were saying about systems versus goals, I think, is is pretty important that's kind of part of Beeminder's philosophy is like just commit to some measurable thing you're going to do every day and just keep making progress on it um so yeah some ways people screw this up um sometimes people get overexcited and make Beeminder goals for everything about their life all at once and it's like unrealistic and overwhelming and so they crash and burn that way uh so yeah i do buy that i mean i, I never buy hard and fast rules but i do buy that like the New Year's resolution is set up to fail because you you bring on everything on at one time. It's probably hard to change so many things simultaneously. Um, do you, now, Dan? Let me ask you: Do you do you? Me and Nimit argue about this sometimes. Do you buy into the theory of willpower depletion? What do you call it? Willpower oh, ego depletion is the ego depletion. Yeah, depletion of willpower. Because uh, I, I let me share. Not, my, uh, okay. go, well, go ahead. No, you you go ahead, and I'll, I will. Okay, so yeah, we have a, a blog post, a couple blog posts about this. Uh, I mean, it has not, it, it's part of the replication crisis. It's like, it was a huge subfield of psychology. So this is a huge blow that this failed replication. Uh, and, but yeah, I mean, I was suspicious of it all along. So I guess I'll pat myself on the back. Okay, so it's not replicable. There, but but I feel like most psychological research can probably fall into that category right now. So it's being yeah. hard to replicate. But I, I oftentimes, I, my argument is that I don't want to, I guess I'm a pragmatic philosopher. It's like, like do I want to be, accept belief in things if they don't help me achieve my goals? And I feel like believing in ego depletion hurts your willpower. Or believing in willpower depletion hurts your willpower because it gives you an excuse to say, oh, my willpower is depleted. Well, if you don't believe in it, just, you say, like, I'm just feeling yeah. weak right now and I just need to summon my willpower, my massive reserves of willpower. I think it was Carol Dweck the psychologist who wrote a paper to that like 
with that claim that it's like willpower is depletable to the extent that you believe it is. Um, mm. So, but yeah, I I guess I I'm okay with that philosophy. Um, I mean, so I guess I try to think of B minor as like a way to route around the whole willpower question. Like, there's no, like, it's not a question. Like, if you have a job that you have to show up for, you're not like using your willpower to to show up every day. It's like that's just what you have to do. Like, it's just your whole everything's built around that. There's just no no question. And I so I think you can with something like uh, with commitment devices in general, I think you can do that. Like, no, I just like, you know, I'm going to have to pay my friend this money or I, whatever it is that you, you know, or like with the, you mentioned freedom in it, that like my browser just not even letting me go there. Like I, you just completely route, routed around the problem. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a comment here. Um, same principle for decision fatigue, right? It's like, if you believe in it, you probably feel it more. Um, I can definitely see that it's like the it, it's the belief in it itself is an excuse to to activate that early. Um, yeah, you know the the I do I do love B minders. It's almost like a um, what is that thinking fast and slow or the idea of two minds, one controlling the other, and then mm -hmm. not having this. I'm sure you think about this as like a a third level super avatar controlling the the two minds that we have. Um, I think it's funny. It's like I I need a fourth level that will get me to add the third level controls that will then control. <laughs> so that, that's what that's the next. Um, you need a a B B minder. So uh, yeah, I call it B minder's bootstrap problem. Yeah. Okay. The bootstrap problem. All right. So if you wanted to, to see a much, Dan, can I? Uh, what's what's uh, the best? What's the best blog post for people to get started reading about B minder? Oh gosh, good question. Well, the Just most recent leave. ones are about like how we're dealing with our Corona captivity using Vminder. So those are pretty good ones to start mm. with. Oh yeah, anything, uh, nice. anything topical? Um, um, I guess two people on our team have written posts like that so far. Um, so yeah, things like um, keeping on track with online learning, um, just health and sanity things. Um, yeah. I kind of, I'm almost embarrassed how much I'm kind of enjoying this. Like, you know, all other responsibilities have gone away. I'm just like, I've like dialed up all, a lot of my commitments because I can, can actually focus more right now. Yeah. No, I think this is a, it is a, and then we're talking about how it's so, it's unevenly affecting large parts of the population, right? And so for some people, this is almost, not vacation, but um, not, not terrible, and some people this is almost like a uh, you know life altering crisis. So it is um, it'd be interesting to see the, the ramifications of that down the road. Mm -hmm. All right, Dan, you're welcome to stay yeah. and uh, hang out with us. We're gonna we're just going through our tactics portion of our talk, and I just went over high speed video. What's the, what speed video do you do you watch YouTube at? I am normally at one speed, so it's only if I'm you watch at one speed. Yeah, oh see, see, Dave, that that is not like the productivity expert. <laughs> my, uh, like my default is now three point five. <laughs> wow, it God. starts at three point five. I thought you only do Fibonacci number speeds. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you don't. No, it drives low. It drives my wife crazy. She she can't even hear it. It upsets her. But I don't know. I just it's uh, it just become who I am now. I guess. I think um, my theory is like the more you, especially entertainment, like. I'm not in the boat of watching movies at 4x because um, I feel like what's the point of finishing a movie? Like, just finish less movies. Like, oh no, you, know I mean? you, can't, like, you can't be part of the cultural zeitgeist, right? Like, <laughs> no, I like, can, why do you need to be part of? It's this? like I can talk to my Westworld friends, my Game of Thrones friends, my Silicon Valley friends in one third of the time. Like, they have to choose. I don't. You have don't to have that many friends. Stop pretending <laughs> like you have so many friends. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, See, so I mean, I, I think okay, go so next... let's go through some of the other. So, so the other, um, the other one that that we like is uh, is Pocket or any you know some of these uh, extensions that help you kind of read later. Uh, th th there's a few different things out there. It can help you stay on track if you if you come across something that is about to distract you. Um, you can kind of short circuit your own uh, distraction engine, uh, send it to read later your mind won't keep thinking about it. And then you can actually read later if you want, 
or most likely like if you're like me you realize that you never actually needed to read that at all and it just kind of goes to pocket <laughs> <laughs> it kind of just goes to pocket to die um but maybe it was for the best right like a lot of this a lot of the hacker news stuff that we read is mostly just distraction more than like actually useful um to our day to day so so yeah so uh, you know that's why we like pocket as a as a, a distraction reduction tool All right, this is one. This is one where uh, do as I say, not as I do, because I have a very hard time doing it. Is um, not processing email in a constant way. I um, I think I I probably process email. Uh, I probably process. I would say on average about 150 emails a day. Um, and what I try to do is one thing. I, one thing I've done is I've written a Chrome extension that removes all alerts from Gmail. So all the um, like the inbox pop up. So it doesn't pull me towards that, right? Because I oftentimes be, before I, I would be in the middle of drafting an email, the thing would change and I would, uh, I'm like, that's the dopamine hit of processing that email is much higher than finishing this email that I'm struggling with. And so I, I think uh, for me, my first step was removing processing email. Uh, and my second step was to, or removing the alerts from email. Uh, I don't get alerts on my phone for Gmail. Um, and then one other thing I, I also do is um, I there's a great feature you'll need you'll need someone else to help you with this called screen time in your phone, where um, where I gave my wife actually my phone locks at eleven thirty so at eleven thirty the only apps I can use are um, I can still read books on the books app I can still call it Uber I can still get Google Maps but every other app is locked so actually right now it's only nine but um, and then only my wife knows the password. And so I don't I don't spend all night doing email or reading Twitter. Um, and uh, there have been some nights where I'm like, oh my goodness, Laura, I need the password. And she's like, um, mostly she pretends to have forgotten it. So um, that's pretty effective. Um, I like that. Yeah, the, the password yeah. changing. Yeah. Yeah. So I think having the uh, screen time lock on your phone, uh, we actually have an employee, Huntley, who um, bought a safe to put his phone in at night. So... He puts a phone in, yeah. he puts his phone in the safe, and he locks the combination, and it won't unlock. Um, but then it's like, you know, if I'm out on a Friday night, and then you're not going to, um, you know, I thought this was more flexible, so that's what I'm currently doing. Unfortunately, I have, like, eight other iPads in the house, and I haven't locked all of them down, so I, I'm still having some problems with it. But, um, but it's slow, <laughs> truly, yeah. but slow uh, slowly but surely um yeah definitely like all those locking mechanism only work if you don't have a alternative that's so easy to access like you probably know your wife's phone password or you know some some other trick um so so yeah so um the next one is really specifically for remote work which we find that we're on zoom or video calls a lot and um you know it's the truth is that uh well you know the truth is that it's pretty easy to goof off even at work, right? So let's not let's not kid ourselves that like we're all like perfectly, um, you know, like free distraction free at work. But um, but I do find that during Zoom calls, if you keep yourself off mute and you keep, you know, assuming you have a good enough microphone that you're not annoying everyone, but like, and you keep your video on, it actually forces you to be more focused on the call than if you allow, you know, if you have a culture on your team that you can just turn off video and, and audio, and then then you have no idea what half the people are doing. Um, and so I, I, I find that just for myself, if I leave the video on, um, A, it motivates others to turn on their video, and then B, it just keeps me motivated. Um, and I think it's important, especially when we have these really long days where we have Zoom call after Zoom call after Zoom call. And so you, um, I think, def, you know, maybe, maybe we should just have some breaks in between. I think that's one thing, but also, um, just to stay, just to kind of stay, stay focused. So I think that, that that's just a specific tip for the remote work environment we're in today. Awesome. Um, All yeah. right. Those are our, our top six productivity hacks, along with some um, additional tactics, along with some advice from the, I would say the man on the mountain, greatest philosopher of productivity, the modern era, Dan Reeves. <laughs> Here, nice, nice, so, nice. You uh, can add that to your LinkedIn, Dan. <laughs> the man on the mountain. <laughs> uh, 
So thanks so much. I, I'm really enjoying doing this, you know, even though we're all in isolation right now, just to uh, get on YouTube, chat with a bit, chat with people, see what people are thinking about. And um, and me and Nimit, we're still just uh, working out issues, debugging stuff. And so we haven't really started, uh, we haven't really started promoting this stuff, but thanks for joining us. And, um, and uh, yeah, hope to talk to all of you soon. Thanks so much for joining again. Yeah, thanks so much. For did, you, did you find out about it? Because we did something pop up in your thing, or how did you know that we were talking about Bminder? We, uh, oh, I didn't know you were talking about Bminder. I just saw that you were doing a full stack thing. He just had an intuition, you know. <laughs> just had, yeah. He gets That's Bminder. The, well, I mean, I saw productivity tip. Obviously, they're going to mention Bminder. So. Of course. <laughs> That's it. Well, that's that's a, that's a power of being a man on a mountain. Is you get <laughs> that's the nerd stuff for you. Brain. Like, <laughs> right. okay. All, All right. right. Have a good night, everyone. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Take care.